to be back in Geelong. Yes. Nine years later. Okay, thank you for coming. Here I go. <laughs>
always refer the pulse when it's not that obvious. And I do that by playing open-handed, right hand on the next pad, left foot is free to play pulse if need be. In this case, you'll see it notated. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Right, and that, that beat, that beat sounds like this.
right now, I still have a lot of things, rhythmic things that I think I need to talk about. I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, and I think it's really important to remind people, mainly musicians in this case, musicians, all musicians, not just drummers, but I guess primarily drummers, because our main concern is rhythm and to, you know, keep, drive the band, anchor the band, to direct the band, you know. That's why they say you're in the driver's seat, which you really are. You really influence what's going on around you to a great degree. Of course, you need, you need everyone to contribute, to be aware. But in terms of rhythm, we have to be more aware to make sure that we really guide it and anchor it. So what do you do to do that? First word is awareness. Second, third, and fourth word is of the pulse. I can't tell you how many times I realise that drummers are not understanding where the pulse is. They learn patterns by rote, but you don't know where it is in time, in the space of time. And that's very important. So the pulse is the fundamental beat of any metre or the fundamental beat of any beat in terms of drum beats. So the most common one is 4-4. Four, four. So we have four quarter notes. That's the pulse. And there are all kinds of subdivisions of that and, you know, smaller units, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes, sixty-fourth notes, triplets, everything that I've shown you tonight, quintuples. It's all part of that pulse, okay? But if you lose track of that pulse as you're studying and playing all these things, it's not going to serve you too well when you get, first of all, for your feel and your groove, and secondly, for, for being. It can anchor your bandmates, you know? So you know exactly where you are all the time. So let's try it. Let's say... Um, Four four. So if I played a groove like You know, there are no rules, there are no, no rules that you have to follow. If you, if you want to be a little more avant-garde and a little more progressive, if this musical situation is correct, or even if you're soloing, check this out. If you, let's say you're, you're, you're just soloing, you've got some time to be creative, and you play a nice groove similar to that, you've got the pulse going here, and you've got your X hat, or you might even do it on the right, that's fine. But um, let's, let's see where else we can go with that pulse. We can superimpose other things, okay? Now we go away from the basic pulse, but check this out. Internally, I've still got the pulse. What happened there? The hi-hat went away from the basic pulse and started playing a dotted eighth note pulse. So I'm still really, and then I might stick to playing the eighth note or the pulse on the right hand. Okay, it's, things are shifting. So.
And you can either modulate or pretend you're modulating and go with that as a new pulse. You know, that's how you can modulate um, uh, rhythmically, okay? Um, you can turn one tempo into another tempo, but it's related, so it actually feels good. Let me do that again. I'm playing quarter note. I'll do it slower. Now I start, I'm playing the pole, eighth note pole there, accenting the quarter note. And I'll start playing dotted eighth note here. Three, four, four, one. That's what I'm thinking internally or feeling.
groups out of that. So that's not part of your natural, normal field. That's going to be a field that you evolves as you explore rhythm. Okay. And then that's going to lead you on to other improvisational ideas because you can feel that, okay, and it's part of your repertoire. It's part of your inventory of options, okay? But if you don't understand it, if you don't know how to feel, how to play triplets apart from the basic triplet, how are you ever going to feel it? Okay, so here we go. Let's, let's use a triplet as an example. You know, we, we're starting to take rhythms in all kinds of directions, and the rules don't apply anymore, okay? So if you're playing a triplet, conventionally, traditionally, we know it as, as that same five. One strong beat, two, two weaker beats. to really work on you know, the more technical aspects, pushing your, 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 I guess your physical and mental boundaries. Uh -huh. How has it felt to come, to come back to something like Southern Suns recently? Did you find you have to hold yourself back, or how does it change your approach? Well, just be aware that that's not the only pop gig I've done in the last 25 sure. years. I have done quite a lot um, in various situations. So, but it's... Um, but those parts specifically for Southern Suns, did you feel any sort of... Um, not anxiousness, but... Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, maybe, you, you, you know, I felt some... Uh, uh, perhaps I, I heard things differently and I expressed them in a different way. A little bit, but not much. I mean, it felt pretty good. It's pretty basic stuff, man. And it's really all in the, in the power of the playing and the, the touch and the feel. 
okay? The, 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 there's, uh, which has evolved a lot for me since those days. You know, it's been another 25 years of developing my hand, you know, just the way those, those intangible things like touch, how do you describe that, how do you teach that, is something that comes with a lot of nuanced practice, a lot of experience, a lot of playing, a lot of working on, you know, just finding the right way to hold sticks, etc. It's all those little nuanced things that contribute towards your ultimate touch, you know. So that, that change felt really good playing with them and it was nice just to lay down some things. There's a few sections I kind of, you know, obviously I've evolved and I was able to to uh, uh, spontaneously offer something a little different in small ways here and there. But uh, it felt really good. To so there's, there's enough going on, at least in your mind, in, in terms of how you approach it, yeah. to not have that feeling like, oh, I need to do some more here, or, you know. No, not really, because... On something different. You know, I hadn't heard a lot of that music, most of it, um, in 25 years. So it was kind of refreshing to go back and think, oh yeah, that's right, that song, oh that song. And, and listen to how I played it back then in the studio. And a lot of it made sense and it, it felt good and I, you know, I didn't want to change too much because that's what the songs are. And we're just embellishing in slightly different ways here and there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, other back then. Um, what have you done over your career to maintain the health of your body, mainly the hands and the wrists? Just hand, you know, mainly the hand and the wrists? Uh, just your body in general. Um, again, it's a, it's, um, I can answer it my way because, but, but be aware that we're all unique, we're all different constitutionally, um, psychologically, we all, we all are different, you know, and what works for me may not work for someone else and they may not think or feel the way I do, so for me, I was, um, I've been very fortunate to have avoided any kind of injury. You know, my hands, my wrists still feel really good, really powerful, like there's no issues with RSI. Um, and it's quite, you know, quite a few um, alias drummers who I know, you know, and you know that have had major issues with that. And uh, so that could be a co combination of many factors. And who knows, a diet, exercise, it could be just, again, just your personal uh, constitutional DNA that, uh, you know, things go one way or another, but it could, it could have something to do with bad technique or uh, something that's been compromised along the way. Very difficult to really understand that. But if you take every step that you know you can take to give you a certain amount of longevity in terms of your playing, then you should start that process. And, and it's a bit of trial and error, and you adjust as you go along. Do you have a stretching technique? Uh, nothing that's, that's, you know, that I do, uh, you know, religiously every day or backstage or anything. There's a few things that I, you know, basically just um, stretching the, the wrists and the fingers a little. You know, bending, you could do it against the wall, which is good, bending the hands down. And up stretching it's hard that way of course and depending how high you go it's going to get more intense along the wall that's a nice stretch for that part of the arm